Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Bismillah wa salatu wa rahmatullah. It's first of all a pleasure to be with all of you for this session. Is there a clock up there? Okay. What time do we finish? What are you doing? I know we have 40 minutes. 12.40? 12.40? Okay. All right. So where to start? How many of you are, are how many of you are friends with me on Facebook? How many of you actually know who I am in any sort of way? <laughs> okay. Like we've actually had a face-to-face -face conversation that lasts more than three minutes. Okay. Alright, that's good. That's, that's what we're working on. Uh, how many of you have had a conversation in the last week with someone who's over sixty years old? 60, 60. Hey, bro, stop raising your hand. Good. That's awesome. Uh, how many have had a conversation in the last week with someone that they don't know? Conversation with someone in the last week that they don't know. That they just, like, well, not including this conference. So we dropped the hands. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, not bad, not bad. So I posted on uh, Facebook this morning a question, which was, what are the pros and cons of Facebook? And I was hoping that people would answer the question so that I could just lecture about it. So a lot of people did, actually. Uh, but I want to get your guys' feedback. So, unless you guys like being spoken at, you guys like being spoken at? Yes. You prefer to be spoken with? No. No? He said no. Like, no, I prefer passive. <laughs> All right, spoken with. So, if you can, uh, I guess initially we'll start with the chaotic method, which is just yell out what are the pros, and you'll see who wins. Actually, that probably won't work. So let's start with this section. Anyone have pros of Facebook? This section here, on my right. Family. 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 You can keeping in touch with family back home. Keeping in touch with family back home. Okay. Easy communication. Ease of communication in general. Alright. Alright, comments uh, as much as, see this is the downside of public participation. <laughs> I'm just kidding, that's alright. Uh, alright, so any other, any other pros? Yeah. You can tell anyone about your day. You can tell anyone about your day, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Depending on what your intention behind that is, but yeah. Promoting social activism. Promoting social activism. Okay, one more on this side, we're going to move to the middle. Go ahead, on the top. Dawah. Dawah. What's Dawah? We're going to get off on attention right now, I can feel it. What's Dawah? It's what you tell people about this and what's going on, you know, in general. Okay, very good. No tangent necessary. Middle section. Any pros you guys? Let's go with cons, because they already took the pros. Some of them. Any cons you guys can think of? Useless what? Okay, useless updates that you don't want to read. You can always hide them from your time. Just hide them forever, because it's as punishment for the one useless update. Or make a standard three strikes you're out type thing. Forever banned from my feet. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that there, there's good in it, but it also kind of makes it really easy to fall into things that you probably shouldn't be doing, or at best wasting your time. Okay. Yeah. Lack of privacy. Yeah, it's really disturbing. Okay. If my entire life was in public anyways, it'd probably bother me. <laughs> but my entire life is public. But for you guys, it should bother you. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? No more humility. No more humility. Because of Facebook. Do you have an example or a clarification of what you mean? Um... Everyone posts cool stuff on the internet because it's cool. 
but we still need to like show how cool we are. Right. And post it online. So right. we do cool things just so you can post it, I guess. So now your 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 method of engaging with the with life around you is a method of trying to pick up something cool you can post it. And people will like it. And consequentially hopefully like you. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah.
they don't have that kind of relationship to it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like saying it's such an old friend, maybe they move around geographically, it's not a PPP, but it's a lot of kind of thing. Pro. Pro. Yeah, I actually, uh, I held out on Facebook for a long time until I knew I wasn't going back to Egypt. And I knew that there were some people on there that I wasn't going to see in a long time. So I decided to get on. And then ever since my life has been <laughs> I find my focus decreasing. My, I feel I'm twitching like I need to check it. Someone actually just commented on something. Oh, no. All right. whatever to impress people that they don't necessarily know, whatever it is, and, uh, okay. That's good. Okay. So, we'll, we'll probably uh, open it up again a little bit, probably. Uh, there's a couple of things to mention, I guess. Uh, one of the pros of this is that I think you guys can tell and see that you probably have enough answers for a lot of the questions about faces, not faces, put them amongst yourselves, okay? So uh, it's not so necessary for myself or someone else to kind of force a topic down your throat, but that you can sit, like, if we were to break up right now and just say, okay, amongst ourselves, let's have this discussion. What are the pros of Facebook? What are the cons of Facebook? What is this issue of faces, not Facebook in particular? And how do we... What are some things that we can do? We could probably have a really beneficial and interesting discussion. So that's that's number one. If you're not dependent upon uh, the imam or the shaykh or whatever it may be. Uh, number two was something that I thought of when I was asking you, and then now I forgot it again, and then I was remembering it again when I was speaking in the last point, and now I forgot it again. Yeah. And I think it was really important too. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's that. Well, I feel that. Um, <coughs> and networking. Was it, 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 would it have anything to do with networking? Networking. That is the thought that I just helped you stir back in. Networking. Um, yes and no. Mm -hmm. 
I, it wasn't networking, but networking is a good point too about about the, about Facebook, about the Twitter in general. I mean, this it's a good opportunity to, to network with one another, definitely. And for me, I mean, there's only so many people you can reach, so many people you can talk to. So it's nice to have the opportunity to uh, to engage people at a different level. Although, if you ever have something you want to ask me about, please don't message me to, on Facebook. Find my email on the ICOI website and email me. If you message me on Facebook, there's a very high probability it's not going to get answered. So just, I lose the messages on Facebook. Uh, so the topic really is faces, not Facebook. And we talked about some of the pros and cons just as a way to stimulate the discussion. But really what we're talking about is how are our face-to-face -face interactions? And is that affected by Facebook? Uh, and I think that that's a subhanallah, it just happened again. It's the third time. I remembered it while I was speaking. I just forgot it. Ah, I got it again. Alright. If you notice when we were talking, and uh, we got a lot of we got a lot of cons and some pros, right? And then when we went to this side that had the opportunity to say one or the other, actually weighed a little bit more to cons. And I think it's interesting that usually when we discuss things as a Muslim community, we we have a tendency to focus on negatives. Uh, so Muslim speakers usually we have a critique. It's always a critique. There's this problem and this problem and this problem and this is what's wrong. And we became, mashallah, very, very good at critiquing things. Destroying them. Anything, any topic, any issue, at any time, destroy it. No problem. Especially MSAs. This is like MSAs stronghold in space. But when it's an issue of pros, then what, what's the discussion, right? So it's good that we recognize some pros, but also just as a kind of psychological framework of how we look at things, we have to keep in mind that we should look at how we can build and move forward at the same time that we critique. We have to critique, yes. But that critique is going to lead us to apathy and probably stagnation unless we're able to find avenues for building, right? So, face is not Facebook. Pros, cons, we talked about. Uh, maybe I'll tell, you know, this last week, some of you may know, this last week I spent in Canada. And I spent in Canada, in Newfoundland, Canada. Anyone know where that is? That hasn't spoken to me about it? Or heard me say where it is? Anyone on their own initiative know where Newfoundland, Canada is? You know. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I trust you. Don't have to say. We'll try someone else. You, up at the top, you knew, right? Yeah. Where is it? All the way at the edge of Canada. That's right. All the way on the east of Canada, there's a little island. It's its own province with Labrador. It's called Newfoundland. That's where my mom was born and raised. And I was looking forward to going there and visiting. We only spent a couple of days. My aunt is sick. But something interesting happened. Like nobody had a smartphone. Nobody was on Facebook, nobody was on any sort of social media or anything else. And they just talked to each other. What? Yes. What is that? What's wrong with these people? Face to face. Not even like Skype. No. Face to face. Five hours straight storytelling. It's beautiful. <laughs> So, but really, you go to the store and you talk to people in the store, and people are nice to each other, and they interact with one another, and everyone. I felt like I was in Arabia before Islam. You know, like how they say Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he knew the the um, the lineages of all the Arabs and their tribes and stuff. So when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, peace be upon him, would meet someone, then he would say, "This is so and so. This is from such and such tribe." And they have these ancestors, and they're related to these people, and they're famous for this, or they're not famous for that, or whatever. I felt like that. I would sit down in the living room, and it's like, do you remember old so-and-so? And they said, yeah, I remember so-and-so. You know, they're actually not from Clark's Beach. They're from South River. And they're from such-and-such such family. And that family used to be in this business, and they used to do that. And they used to own that over there, and then they were in such-and-such such place, and they moved to this one, and they have five kids. And they, they know everything about everyone. It's really fascinating. Especially when you, you know you live in a place where I pray with people every single day. I don't know who they are, you know. And these people, they're like my my, especially my aunt, who's older. You ask her anyone, she she says, yeah, I remember them. 
and they're from here, that's where. And you sit and you talk. And my other aunt is like a master storyteller. We literally sat for four or five hours and her and her husband are telling stories back and forth. When this happened and that happened, we went, we went to a place, a story happened. I heard it three times before we left the place. <laughs> that's how much. But the interaction is, 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 is at that level, you know, where you talk and you look at one another and have tea. You know, tea is actually a really important tradition. I don't know if people realize that. How many of you guys grew up with tea in your house? Yeah. What do you do when you drink tea? You talk, right? You talk. Uh, I grew up every single morning, my mom and I would have tea together before school. We have breakfast and we have tea, and then we go to school and we come home in the evening. We went, the first day I was there, we had tea five times. We had tea in the morning, you have tea in the mid-morning, you have tea in the middle of the day, you have tea in the afternoon, you have tea in the evening, you have tea before you sleep. And then you kind of want to go to sleep, you have tea again. It's like tea, you keep having it. But you sit there and you talk, right? And I think that one of the, the issues of Facebook is that I'm sitting here thinking, I wonder if I have any updates while we talk right now, and I have three, and four, something like that. And that's wrong. You know, we lose the ability to focus on one another. We lose the ability to talk to one another, to look at one another, to feel one another, to love. Like when you talk on Facebook, right? I post something on Facebook, someone responds. I don't see your smile when we talk on Facebook. I don't hear you laugh when we talk on Facebook. When you take a picture of the place that you went, say someone were in Santa Barbara, they say, wow, the ocean looks so beautiful, let me take a picture and post it. I didn't smell the air. Right? I didn't feel the sand. You took a picture of the forest or the nice trees around the area that you're staying in, I didn't hear the way that the leaves rustle in the wind. That's different, right? So I feel that one of the biggest uh, downsides of social media and of always communicating with one another through social media is that we stop appreciating life. We become more and more detached from the actual beauty and feeling of life. Uh, and I don't know if you guys, can, can people relate to that? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you know, like the. I totally agree. Yeah. But now, you know, 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 you the, our teachers will do in Egypt a lot of times is that when you sit in the class and they start to teach and people start to write notes and a lot of teachers would actually get upset when you write notes because they would tell you I don't want you writing notes right now I want you focusing on what I'm saying I want you listening you can write your notes afterwards you can review what we read, what we covered you can come with your questions and we can talk about it but right now I want you focused so I, I think that there's, there's a lot to say in, in, in that regard. And the, you know, the Sufis, the, the, I don't like to use the term mystic, because mystic sometimes refers to extreme Sufism rather than what you get consider like moderate Sufism. But nonetheless, uh, one of the things they say is that the one who tastes knows. The one who tastes it knows it. And what I fear is that as long as we're worried about this, we don't taste this, right? So you say, like, you live stream a class, for example. People say, no, it's okay, I'll just watch it from home. It's not the same. It's not the same. Learning online is not the same as learning in person. I don't care what anyone says. You might get the same material benefit. The actual material benefit, yes. You might be able to get that same content, right? But, as especially as Muslims, we need to understand something good. Islam is not about just learning content. Right? 
the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Do you know what the Sunnah means? What does Sunnah mean? Anyone? The path, right? Or the way? It's the way of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The way of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is not known through only memorizing statements or learning the answers to questions. But the way is known through interacting with people of knowledge and people of righteousness. Not only knowledge, this is something, right? But righteousness. People who can, when you spend time with them, you feel their presence, and their presence is important to you and beautiful to you in your life and transformational. And they show you how to live, right? There's a be very beautiful story that we came across uh, in one of the classes at ICOI on uh, Ibn Sinin. Ibn Sinin was from the Tabi'in. He was from the generation after the companions. And he was a great scholar of that period. And he died in 110. And he used to send his students to watch another man from his generation who died in 108. If I remember correctly, his name was Apostle. Does that strike you as strange at all? Like, imagine who's who's my who's who, let's not mine. Let's put two people out there who are contemporaries. Uh, let's and we'll use older people because I like older people because we've seen them for a long time. You know, it's not like we were praising one time a speaker in front of one of our shayuf and he said that come back to me eight years from now. So the person is still there. And they're still known, and they're still doing their job, then come back to me and we'll talk. But right now he's new. We don't know anything about this person. We don't know if they're actually real. You know? So I like older people. So let's say you have Dr. Jamal Badawi and Imam Siraj Maharaj. Okay? And Imam Siraj, if you don't know who those people are, Afallah. May Allah forgive us and pardon us for neglecting our elders and our teachers. Uh, so say you you go and you see Imam Siraj and he tells you, you know, I had some students of mine and I sent them to watch Dr. Jermaine but I just wanted to see how he is. That's what we're like. Imagine he's, and this is a great, great scholar. If you were to put him in our time, he'd be bigger than anyone that you can even imagine. And he would send him, he would send students to this man to watch him. He said, why? Because he grew up in the house of Aisha, of the because he grew up in the house of Aisha, so he grew up in the prophetic household. So he's going to know things that we don't know. He's going to live things that you don't aren't able to live. He will have experienced stuff that you will not have been able to experience. So he would send his students there to watch him, just to watch, just to watch and see how he is. In the in the circle of Imam Ahmed. So there were thousands and thousands of students that would attend the circle of Imam Ahmed. And only a few hundred were actually writing the knowledge. Everyone else was just watching. Because they wanted to see the way they needed to So again, I think one of, the, one of the problems here, one of the concerns, is that when we're tied into social media all the time, is that we don't have face-to-face -face interaction. And we lose the ability not only to communicate with each other, but also to appreciate one another, and to understand each other's humanity, and to feel one another, to really get an understanding of where we're coming from. You know, my father, when I was young, was probably, probably in elementary school. My father, when I was in elementary school, he, when we went to places you know, with adults, and the adults would sit and talk, he would always tell me, like, why don't you come and sit with the adults and talk with them? Or so-and-so, you know, Mr. So-and-so, the father of this person, he was asking you a question, how come you didn't respond to his question? He would push me at the age of like eight or nine, ten years old, to hold full conversations with adults. Because he would say, you know, part of your development Part of what you need to be able to do is sit with someone and talk to them. Sit with someone and actually have a conversation. So in closing, in the last few minutes, um, what I would like to do, because I actually have a problem with this as well, uh, 
I've been steeped in books for too long and forgot what it's like to deal with people. And as such, a lot of times it's hard to have a conversation that's not in line with what you study, right? So I found this a lot. You know, I'm, I've studied fit usually, study law pretty much day and night. At least I did for many years, now I don't. But you find that you don't have things to connect with people. So I want to again move from session, section to section and people can throw out uh, common things that you can connect with people on. All right. So I'll give you an example. This is, I think, uh, and and not only because you know, like we're, I would assume that everyone is a is a believer and everyone is a person of conscience. So it's not just about you connect with them on whatever they want to connect on, and you just talk about anything, which is sometimes okay, but also that you connect and you're able to grow the discussion and the dialogue into something that's productive. Which doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be super scientific. I mean, a productive conversation, for example, I might talk to someone who's 13, and a productive conversation for me with a 13-year-old is basketball. Because I want that person to feel like I understand what they, what they live. And that's productive for me because now we're friends. That's productive, right? So it doesn't mean that it has to be solving the world's problems in every single conversation. But that there's something positive coming out of it. Uh, one of the examples of this was a, a talk that I gave in Ramadan to, uh, we had interfaith colleagues, people who share other faith traditions, come and have dinner with us at the masjid in Ramadan. So, I gave the entire talk on food. And some of the people from the, the mosque were very surprised. You know, they said, what are you doing basically? I was like, fine. Uh, and, and they said, well, you didn't tell them about Islam, and you didn't tell them about this, and you didn't tell them about that. And I told them that that's not what we need to do. What we need to do is interact with these people. Show them. Like, we have a richness to our experience just as we have a richness to your experience, and we're going to share that. So I spoke about food. Because I feel actually that that's one of, just like we talked about tea, right? You know, the food is actually one of the big things that you can connect with people. You tell them about the food that you're used to, you eat the food that they're used to, and you have conversations about it, and you can relate to it, not only about the food itself, but about the experiences that happen around food. So now what do we do? We have a meal, we take the picture, and we post it. What did we used to do? You have a meal, you talk to the person in front of you. You have breakfast with your family, you have dinner with your family, you go out with your friends, you see your relatives. These are all experiences that are being built. So food, I think, is a, one conversation, one topic that's universal. Talking about universal topics through which you can connect with people, right? So if we're going to try to talk to each other, what are things that we can talk about? Right? Do you understand my question? Alright, so we have four minutes. You guys have one minute and twenty seconds. <laughs> Yeah, to answer the question. What are things that you can talk about? Universal topics. This side, this side. Weather. Weather. That one's always very quick, right? Wow, it really is a nice day today. It sure is. <laughs> but, how can you take it farther? You know, actually there was, um, Paulo Figueiredo, he has an interesting thing about how he figured out why he gets depressed. And he realized that it goes back to the way that a certain type of weather used to affect the village that he grew up in and the memories that he associated with that. So yeah, you can actually take weather into interesting places, right? You can say, yeah, it's a beautiful day today, it's sunny. You can leave it there. Or you can say, you know, when we used to have days like this when I was a kid, our friends would get together and we'd go play in the street. That's a different conversation, right? Okay, so what else? Family. Family, yes. Health, yes. Travel, Travel yes. Sports, you did? Yeah, usually. Okay, you guys are done because you're going to take all the stuff. You're going to go to the middle. But sports, usually. Although as a caveat, uh, like one of the things they say in public, public speaking is that you should not use a whole lot of sports examples because usually it marginalizes the women from the audience. Usually, not always. I'm not trying to generalize. I'm, and I'm saying what someone else said, so don't come after me about it. But, uh, Usually you marginalize the portion of the audience you can talk about. Okay, middle. The news, what's going on in the world, could lead to some interesting
interesting arguments. But yeah. So the, your childhood is special. Your childhood. Any of you guys have seen Ratatouille? Ratatouille? You know that scene where like he eats the food and he goes back to his childhood? Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> Music. Yeah. Music, yeah. It's definitely it's universal. Yeah, it's a, you know, just figure out how you're going to navigate the discussion, but it's still universal. Yeah. Cooking. Yeah. By the way, that should not be something that's limited to women. I'll make it relevant to the guys. As men, you should be able to survive, right? Yeah, All right, middle. We have one minute. So middle, one more in the middle. Is that, are you raising your hand? Okay. School. Yeah, school, yeah. But remember what I said about weather, right? So you want to take general conversation, general topics of conversation, and lead them deep into like the core of people's experiences and emotions, right? So you can get more out of it. Last one. If there was.